I'm joined by stand-up comedian Angel Campy in studio. Welcome. Yay, thank you. Yay. <laughs> Sitting down for a change. Yes. Nice. Yes. You're our sit-down comedian well, today. Well, I'm off right now. So okay. I can sit. <laughs> I'm just relaxed. You can be funny. Okay. So we're here to talk about your show, yes. yes, Really Angel. Yes. Um, first, let's talk about the name. Yes, it's Angel, really. <laughs> <laughs> what else? <laughs> well, I'm, yes. Well, my show is called Yes, Really Angel because my first, my Twitter handle was Yes, Really Angel and it became sort of a brand because everyone asks me, Angel, is that your real name? And yes, really, <laughs> it is. So when I decided, when Nick Rabinovitz and I started writing the show and mm -hmm. planning it, the only name I wanted to do was Yes, Really Angel because no one knows who I am. So how can you do like Angel Campy and she's a funny comedian? And people <laughs> will be like, is that her real name? Yeah. So Yes, Really was the Yes, Really Angel. And had you worked with Nick before? No, only we'd done um, stand-up together at a charity event and he'd seen me on stage and, and then, you know, you're sort of like starstruck, it's Nick yeah. Rabinovitz, ah! <laughs> and then he, he sort of pulled me aside and was like, please stop stalking me, no. And then um, <laughs> he pulled me aside and was like, I think you really have potential, you yeah. funny. And um, then when I could speak again, it was, it, he, he sort of said, I'll be your mentor if you want a coffee. You know, he's the nicest comedian ever, like in terms of, he's so big and famous, but he lets us little, little ones, you know, be his little protégés. And so then when I was planning on writing a show, I met Nick for, for coffee mm -hmm. just so that he could give me advice. Yeah. I didn't expect anything. And then at the end of the coffee, he stuck out his hand and offered to be my director, which... Yeah. What did that feel like? <laughs> I just, ah, it, was, <laughs> it was like the approval of a daddy you've never had. <laughs> You're like, maybe I'm not such a loser. <laughs> So yeah, no, it was amazing. And then Nick, you know, and he phones you all the time to check up on um, my show and stuff. And it's just, it's every time my phone rings and I see Nick's name, I'm like, <laughs> so no, it's amazing. It's amazing that he wants to, you know, and uh, he's never directed anyone before. So that, you know, him seeing something in me sort of gave me that extra confidence that yeah. I probably wouldn't have had to do a show. That's really amazing. I can't even imagine what that whole process feels like. Mm -hmm. um, your show, you just had some Joburg dates. Yes. Um, and Cape Town is to be announced? Yes, I've done, I did Grahamstown. It launched in Grahamstown. I did a preview in Cape Town, which was a sold out event. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, Joburg, I just got back now on Sunday and it was great, so much fun. And yeah, so I'm looking at maybe the Baxter, the Fugard was on the table. So we're just going to see which, which theatre wins the bidding because I'm in such high demand now. You are very famous now, <laughs> and Yes. <laughs> People don't even that. ask really Angel. They just they go, just oh, that oh, Angel. Yes, Angel. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, tell me about the show. Um, it's a stand-up comedy show. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, people stand on a stage with a microphone and there's an audience. <laughs> kind of a format. No, uh, it's basically me on stage talking about my life, my trials and tribulations for just over an hour. The, the essence is I, uh, my best compliment from the comedian fraternity or Is there a code. comedian fraternity? There is and they're all boys. It's like a fraternity like Lamba Kappa Pi boobies. It's like that kind of a fraternity, like American Pie style, because yeah. there's so few girls. So it is, it's a boys club. And they, I had a Joburg comic opening for me um, in, you know, in the run there. And he pulled me aside after a couple nights and he was like, you know, my brother and I were talking about you and we were like, the main thing about Angel as a comedian is that she's not a girl comedian. She's just a comedian. And I was like, yes. <laughs> So that's, that's for me, my that comedy... That's a huge compliment. Yes, for me. I, I mean, everyone's got their own sort of barometer, but like, I don't talk about being a girl on stage. I'm sure some of the stuff pertains to being a girl because it's you me. You are a girl. Yeah, because yes. that would be weird if I was like, so don't you hate it when, you know, your, your jock strap things. gets <laughs> round up and they're like, why is she? She's lying. So <laughs> obviously I speak about bras sometimes, but um, it's, you know, I talk about politics. I talk about living in South Korea, teaching English. I talk about, you know, the Taliban and Oscar Pistorius gets a little shout out because why not? <laughs> why not? Why not? <laughs> so, so, you know, anything that I find amusing, I don't I don't feel that I have to be in the, a lot of people expect a girl comedian to talk about generically, oh my ex-boyfriends and Periods. period cramps and you know, mm -hmm. the female V words and all those, yeah. you know, and, and a lot of people sort of say to me after the show that they're quite relieved that, and they were quite surprised that a girl that looks like me could speak about politics. So. But what does that even mean? Uh, well, you see, <laughs> I like to take the compliment side and yeah. ignore the sexist side. Yeah. <laughs> 
because guys are usually like, yo, I didn't expect someone that looks like that to be smart. And you're like, because you probably get the same. All the time. Look at those legs, yeah. huh? And you're wearing heels. <laughs> but that's what I do, and I feel like I'm doing my little bit for feminism. Because I wear heels on stage, and I'll be all like, and then, and then I make fun of China, and then they're like, oh, <laughs> she's not just a bimbo. <laughs> she actually knows something. So, it's, you know, next time they see someone in heels with long hair, maybe they won't be like, She's just a bimbo, maybe. Though. She, maybe she also knows about China's foreign relations. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ask her something valid. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing secretly. Cool. <laughs> and what's it like being a female comedian? I mean, I know now you've kind of like won over the the bros. The bros. Um, they take me seriously. But what's it like trying to win them over? Well, you know, you think you're going into much more of a battle zone than, than it actually is. Okay. They're, they're, comedy is such a family. It's so hard to explain, um, but you know, all comedians are so unique. It's not like an acting where there can only be one Romeo and one Juliet. So everyone's like, oh, besties, but they're all secretly <laughs> hoping Mercutio is your role and they get to, you know, Shakespeare references. Yeah, I'm yeah. smart, that's what I'm smart. telling you. Yeah. I, I read. Like, well, uh, that's read. great. Well, Baz Luhrmann made it into a movie. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio starred. I know about the movie. I'm spinning. I'm going to spin okay. back. Yeah. Mm, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Just pace you more. It's so <laughs> alluring. Um, what was I saying? Oh, so the comedy community is not very competitive because every single comedian can only be themselves. Right. Like you're, you're angel, no one can take it from you. Even if another girl with dark hair and blue eyes and my height and mm -hmm. you know, whatever, she's not going to take away my crowd. So the comedy community sort of welcomes everyone in and if you're funny, that's it. That's the kind of barometer. You can be rich, poor, black, white, anything. As long as you're funny, you're in the team. Um, so as a female, you think that, oh, they're going to, but they're like, what? She's a funny girl. That's it. She was yeah. funny. I made it into the bro club. And it's, it's a, and all the other female comedians are so supportive because the more the merrier. Because the biggest enemy is the public. People don't think girls are funny. So. But why? I don't, I don't know. I didn't. Used to. <laughs> and Tracy Class is one of the, like, forerunners of female comedy. She's She's great. As she, I once read an interview where people were like, well, why don't you think girls are funny? She was like, well, don't ask me. I'm a funny one. <laughs> like, don't ask the ones who are actually doing it. Ask the girls who aren't in comedy. You know, why aren't more girls comedians? I don't know. We, we should be. Yeah. You know, but like Tina Fey and all these funny women are seriously changing the, the face of comedy. But I know that I have struggled. The public are often hesitant to invest in a female comedian. But it's fine. We'll slowly change their plans. You're going to get there. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. I mean, Tumi Muroke is out there tra trailblazing and Anne Hirsch with the Anne Hirsch show. Yeah, it's hilarious. And then Tracy Class and Mel Jones, another Cape Town comic. These are like the ladies who are making it out there and yeah. you know so the more people who you see are funny then then the more people, the more people will be funny yeah <laughs> i know little girls growing up out there with their little tutus put down the tutu pick up a microphone <laughs> you heard her <laughs> <laughs> just you know you're gonna have issues if you want to be a ballerina use those issues and turn them into funny <laughs> <laughs> were you always a comedian well I mean, no, I started when I was 28. I'm 30 now. I know, but amazing. You look um, fabulous. I was going to say, probably. <laughs> nah, just kidding. Um, but my mom says that when she used to fetch me from nursery school when I was like four years old, then the teacher would say, you have to wait for Angel because she's telling the kids a story. Like story time. No, but that's what they said about me. So now you're a TV presenter. You and see? you're a Yes. You see? Exactly. Okay. So we were just like, please notice me. My parents don't love <laughs> me at home. <laughs> When my mother fetches me, I need to get a lot of attention so that when she starts to ignore me, it's not so bad. <laughs> I can could, I could stop the child at the school like me, mom. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the thing. I used to always be that kid, like, I'm prepared, our roles. Like, I wanted to talk to, to the class, and mm. it's never scared me, the concept of standing mm. on stage talking. And so when I was younger, I thought that meant that I wanted to be an actress. But then I started acting, and... And then I was like, but I want to tell myself what to do. The director yeah. doesn't know what's <laughs> up. You, you know? don't know me. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know what's inside this. And so I, um, then when I found comedy, it was everything. It was writing, directing, and acting, essentially. But it's very honest. It's scary. Did you have to work to put yourself out there? Because comedy, you're really telling your story. Um, and I think being funny is really putting yourself out there because either people think you're funny or they don't. Yes. Right? Did you have to work towards that? Or? Well, I mean, 
I don't know. I've always been really quirky, class clowny. So the first time I started, my roommate Sivangezi, he's also a comedian and actor, and he sort of told me to start. So I was like, okay, my first set, five minutes, not a big deal, you know, quick on off. So I thought, well, let me just write what people think about me, my, my name. Let me talk about growing up with the name Angel and it's a stripper's name and ha ha. Like all the different cliches because I've grown up with it my whole life. So I thought, when people hear it, there's always like five responses, one of five sort of things that people say. So I wrote that into the first set and then the audience found that really funny because they'd w all had one of those five thoughts. So they were like, oh, I was thinking that she should be a stripper. How <laughs> did she know? Because <laughs> you're predictable. <laughs> and so you just, you know, I sort of didn't work. I just took everything I knew about who I was and how I am perceived and how I deflect all my awkwardness because been awkward. Mm -hmm. I didn't always have this face. <laughs> I grew don't into this that. slowly. <laughs> like just pop no. I don't know. But yeah, it's, I just take all you just take your insecurities and you you mask them with humor. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what else to, you know, yeah. how to say it. It's I mean, comedians they're just people. So you can't stereotype a comedian. No, so everyone okay. likes to think of the pure clown who's secretly sad and sure some comedians are depressed but all people some people are depressed some people are happy and I like to think I'm not depressed well good yeah, but I mean sometimes sometimes you cry in the shower but that's normal it's, oh, it's no one can see the tears when the water's <laughs> <laughs> um, mostly joking <laughs> it's okay <laughs> um you mentioned that you're in South Korea yes do you do do you travel and do comedy not yet, not yet, because I don't know if South African apartheid jokes will translate in South Korea very well. <laughs> Maybe other places. Yeah. <laughs> no, I taught English in South Korea. A lot of that is in my one-woman show. I have about 20 minutes of living in South Korea and Asia and just the obscurity of that. Um, I haven't traveled the world yet because it is only year two of Yes Really Angel the Comedian, but maybe maybe it's terrifying just even speaking about that is but you know look at trevor noah he did it he's he's over in america and edinburgh killing and it. killing it yeah. and also doing comedy but you know <laughs> just kidding okay where can people find out about your show um my show yes really angel is um what well, they can find out about it on twitter i guess my at yes really angel mm -hmm. or yes really angel.com or Facebook forward slash guess yes really angel. Okay, great. Thank you so much for joining. Thank us. you. It's oh, been are a lot we of fun. hugging or you just, like just holding? Oh goodness. Okay, that's like a tribute to Anne Hirsch <laughs> and her hug. I feel like I should ask for a lock of your hair just for Anne. <laughs>